Welcome back. And today I'm going to talk about fuel systems. Uh, I've been getting requests and people asking me what my fuel system setup is, pumps, lines, etc. So today I'm going to be going in depth about that, talking about what it takes and what I recommend and some theory behind some of the reasons why I do things the way I do. Uh, this will be mostly information about uh, EFI, electronic fuel injection systems, not carburetor. Some of this information will translate to carburetor stuff, but um, EFI and carburetor fuel pumps are different. Carburetors run low pressure, high volume, whereas fuel injection is high pressure. So if some of this inform if you have a carburetor, this information probably won't pertain to you. So you might just want to abort now, just letting you know. So let's get into it. Okay, uh, one other thing, this information I'm about to talk about is universally accepted for the most part. This is not Ford specific, it's not uh, Mustang specific, a lot of this information will translate to whatever application you have. And we will be talking about um, e uh, sorry, uh, E85 fuel, ethanol, uh, as opposed to gasoline. Um, this stuff will work for gasoline, but when you run E85, you just need to amp everything up to run E85. Uh, so, because I run E85, that's what we're going to talk about. Alright guys, starting at the back, I had questions about my fuel cell. This is just an eBay fuel cell. It, it's just a little cheapy unit. It's like, uh, I don't even know, 12 gallons or something like that. It has no baffles in it it's just an open box in there so in one of my other videos i talked about using wiffle balls as baffles they work really well if you want to go back and watch that um the other thing is so we're just going to start at the back of the vehicle and work our way forward on this fuel system setup starting with the vent i had questions about um you need to vent your fuel cell it's very important that you do that if you don't vent it you can have an airtight cell and that makes it a lot harder to suck fuel not to mention if you have an airtight cell and you have you know if that gets a little bit of pressure in there with the gas fumes a pressurized uh, canister with gas fumes in it is highly explosive so if you get a spark or anything or whatever I mean you've got a bomb more or less so you need to vent your your fuel cell I just have a little I think this is a 3 8 uh, fuel line hose and it's just on a little barbed fitting that runs see how I have it kind of where it kind of comes up so if any fuel were to slosh you know it'd be really hard to make it all the way up this bend before it just comes back down I haven't had any problems with any sort of leaking or anything and then you need to run your vent I have it just plumbed out a little hole and it dumps just up under up under the car you need to get the fumes outside of the car do not put like a little filter like a little tiny little stubby valve cover filter on here because you'll be venting your fumes inside your cab which is also very dangerous the only way you can get away with just putting a little filter vent on here is if you have a fuel cell in the back of a truck bed so that's that's all you need to do for a vent you need to have a vent and just a little vent like this works perfect okay We'll get to the return at the end of this video. Okay, looking at the underside of the car here. Uh, my car has had the factory spare tire well cut out and it has this drop box. You don't need all that, but um, okay. So this fuel cell has a little sump uh, down in the bottom of it. Most of them have that and then a majority of them have two typically 10 an fittings in the bottom here and you're going to want to use one of those for your feed to your pump okay um while we're talking about these bottom two fittings here i see this all the time is uh people getting this wrong is what they'll do is they'll use one as their feed to their pump and then they'll use this second one 
as their return line. Do not use this as your return line. Be and here is why, because picture your return fuel line has a lot of pressure coming back, returning fuel to the tank. Oh, just picture like a hot tub jets when you're in a hot tub. You know, it makes all, he makes that nice stream with all the bubbles and everything. Well, that's what's happening right here. So you're pumping, you know, a good jet of fuel back into the tank with air bubbles and mixing and blah, 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 while the pump is still trying to suck fuel. So what that can cause is you can accidentally cause starvation to your pump because you're making a slurry right here, returning fuel when uh, the pump is trying to suck fuel. You don't want to accidentally be sucking air bubbles or little pockets of air or starving the pump accidentally. So do not use, uh, you don't want your feed and your return here, which is not the return, Don't you don't want them next to each other, okay? So we'll get more into that here a little bit later in the video, but I just thought, I see that all the time where people have one as the feed, the other as the return, and you don't want to do that ideally. Okay guys, going down the list is um, what you want to do is see how I have where my fuel pump is located, okay? Now this, the fuel pump I run here is a Magna Fuel 750 inline pump. And this pump is good to ride around a thousand horsepower on E85. Uh, they have came out with a lot newer pumps than this. Uh, twin motor brushless. I know Aeromotive makes one and some other guy, Holly, that can support close to 1500. But this pump is more than adequate than what for what I'm doing right now. This car makes around 8, 850 wheel. So this thing is perfectly capable. It's a good pump. And uh, if you're wondering what the price is, I don't know exactly what they are today, but I want to say I paid around $450 for this. Okay, so anyways, what you want to do when it comes to pump location is you don't want your pump too high. Say, as in, you don't want to mount your pump way up in your trunk or something like that. So when I, if I were to undo this feed line here, go into the pump, if I were to unscrew this right here, just gravity would just pour fuel out of that. So that's making my pump not have to work very hard because it's just automatically getting fuel from the gravitational flow versus if this line were way up high, if it was so high that the gravity couldn't overcome that, then you're making your pump work a lot harder to suck fuel. Whereas this one is basically just draining to the pump. Okay, and on that note, uh, these pumps are not designed to suck fuel. So do not mount these pumps way up on the frame rail or up on the firewall. These pumps are meant to basically, how I'm talking, drain fuel to them and then push fuel. They're very strong pumps, but they're meant, designed to push, not suck. Okay. You might be wondering what my fuel filter setup is. A lot of guys will run a pre-filter meaning pre-pump, uh, that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. Uh, I'm fine with not doing it. I didn't have one. I mean, it, like I said, it's fine if you want to run one, or if, if not, uh, I do run a post-pump filter. So if we're, say, something that bad to happen to the pump, or it grinds some, some fins or something in there, at least it won't send it into my fuel injectors. So I've got this little air motive canister uh, filter here, which you can take apart and clean. And uh, fuel line size, this is all 10 AN, okay? That's another thing. When it comes to E85, you need to have big fuel lines. E85 requires, I can't remember the exact number, I want to say 30% more uh, volume over gasoline for the same amount of power. So how you increase volume is you increase line size. And 10 IN is more than adequate for what you need to do. Some guys will run 12. Um, I think that's a little overkill, but uh, 10 AN is right what you want to do. So it's a 10 AN to the pump, and then uh, I run 10, 10 AN here uh, clear up to the uh, fuel rail. So that's what we'll do. We'll go look at that. Okay, here's where we're going to get into some more theory. Um, there are some this. There is some information to back some of this up. Like I said. It's a lot of guys have their own preference. There isn't really technically a wrong way to do this, but 
Uh, we'll go into why I do it the way I do. And this is obviously on a V8. Um, so this information is for V8s only. But uh, okay, so I have 10 AN coming up to here and then it splits on a Y to twin dash eights that feed both rails, okay? Coming in on the back. Now we'll go, we'll come back to this. Some guys will run dash 10 straight into the back of one rail, okay? Then they'll go over here, it'll loop to the, for picture that's not there, it'll loop, it'll go to the other fuel rail, and then they'll have their regulator on the back side, and then their return back. And I don't like doing them like that. Uh, we'll call that in series, because they're connected, and here's why. Because there are some research, I guess you could call it, some, uh, some theory on you could get different pressure drops between each rail doing that. When the injectors fire on one bank opposed to the other one, you could get, say, 45 PSI here on this rail, and then you're getting 50 on this rail, therefore making it harder to tune. I have seen many cars set up in series like that with no issues, but I just try to avoid any possible tuning problems. So this is why I run it parallel. That's what we are gonna call when you split it to dash tinge to each one. That way, each line, each fuel rail, each bank of the motor is getting dedicated fuel pump unregulated supply. So that way you're, you're guaranteed to get fuel in each rail equally. And then when you do that, the, uh, you have this return coming to the return side of the regulator. This one I just have using hard fittings. Um, it would be the same as if there was a braided line. Just it, when you use hard fittings, this is fully secured and I don't have to make a bracket for it. And then I have a dash eight return going back to the tank. And a dash eight is perfectly adequate um, for that pump. And on E85, if you got a beefier pump, uh, you might need a uh, bigger return, but dash eight seems to work just fine. When, uh, when it comes to AN fittings and whatnot, uh, the bigger the fittings, the more expensive they are. So anywhere you can save some money is always a good thing. Um, the fuel regulator I use is a MagnaFuel. I, I don't know the part number on it. I really like MagnaFuel's products. Um, they're very high quality. They seem to be just that much nicer than Aeromotive stuff. Uh, just, just a tiny bit nicer. And they're about the same money. The only drawback is they're fucking purple and blue, which matches nothing, but they do look kind of cool. So that's basically how I have my my fuel line set up on a V8 here. Uh, one thing to notice or to note about fuel regulators is if you have a boosted car, obviously you need to buy a regulator that has a boost reference, okay? So when this sees boost pressure, you tie it into manifold vacuum here. This line is, goes to my little uh, vacuum log back here. Uh, this will increase fuel pressure one PSI with boost. So you need to increase fuel pressure as boost goes up. Just if you didn't know, now you know. Um, what I run for fuel injectors on this motor is these are Bosch, two, 210 pound Bosch fuel injectors. They have the GM style connector, which I have an adapter on. Um, these are 210 pound, which is 210 cc. If you're gonna run E85, you need big fuel injectors. Um, at a minimum, I'd say at least 100 pounders or 1000 cc injectors. Uh, the thing on injectors is I like to go big because why run your injectors at 100% all the time? I'd rather run my injectors at 75% and have more of a tuning window because if you just have your injectors maxed out all the time, it's just that much harder to uh, get the tune dialed in exactly because you don't have that much of a window. 
So the Bosch 210s are a budget injector, but they're proven they can make a lot of horsepower. So that's why I run for fuel injectors. And uh, there's that. Now for the last part of it, the return. Like I was talking about, there's my return. It goes down. I'm not going to show it, but it follows the frame. It's tied under the frame. All zip, -like, zip tied up. Comes back and returns to the tank. Now here is what I was talking about when it comes to returns. This right here is my return. And you want to have your return at the top of your tank. Now some tanks don't come with top fittings. Uh, if you can try and find one that has them, uh, that's great. Otherwise you can add a couple bulkhead fittings up top. And the reason why I return back to the top is so the fuel, like we were talking about earlier, so you don't accidentally suck air on your uh, supply to your pump. If you return it all the way back over here, it just runs down the side of the tank and back into the pool of fuel and does not disturb the supply whatsoever. So if you can, ideally you want to have your return back on the top side of the tank. And that's pretty much it guys. That fuel system is pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, it applies to almost anything and it will make a lot of horsepower and shouldn't give you any problems. So I appreciate you guys watching. I know it's a lot of information to take in. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, hit that subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.